Hello everybody and welcome to video season 5 draft review, yeah 5. So I should have gotten this done earlier but I didn't get it done and as you can see I don't even have my team page because it doesn't exist anymore now it has my season 5 team which is old but yeah. So I kind of just wanted to go over some of this, uh, some of this team, some of the stuff I wanted to bring and then I kind of also want to go behind um, talk about some of my schedule and kind of what I was going through through some of those matches, especially I really want to highlight some of, I guess, my better matches are the ones, a lot of the closer ones and or more hype ones, I guess. So, um, yeah, just some of the harder matches, kind of evaluate my own draft experience and also, you know, potentially help other people, I guess. So, first off, um, yeah, let's start with our Season 5 team. I think I'm going to go by tier. So tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four, tier five. I had two tier ones, three tier twos, two tier threes, two tier fours, two, two tier fives, I believe, something like that. So um, yeah, let's start with my, I guess my MVP, which would be Cinderace in tier one. So at the beginning of the season, Womble sent me the tier list and he said, hey, yo, what do you think about this tier list, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I was like, why is Cinderace in tier two? Why? Like... So, you know, I, at the very beginning of the season, I was like, okay, Cinderace is really good. And I honestly thought it was kind of underestimated. Like, when I was thinking about drafting this, I said, okay, without Dynamax, you don't feel forced to run bounce. You have some pretty accurate moves without high jump kick and power ball. You have flare blitz, you have iron head, um, you have U-turn. And I just thought that it had a lot of tools I also think its versatility is really solid because you do have that core change, that coaching, um, even stuff like bulk up for setup. So, you know, when I was thinking about this mod, I really did feel like it had a lot more potential than I guess people were giving me credit for, right? And it's also a really, really cool protect user because in a format where protect is so crucial, right? I mean, you can change from normal, from fire to normal, right? And so at, at times when someone has a really strong, like, water type attacker, right? It's actually really nice to be able to say, hey, I can protect here and I can change my type, right? Defensively, Cinderace is also much better because now if some, like, what happened with T-Max is like, okay, if I'm Dynamaxing, right? And let's say you call my flying typing. I'm probably just dead because of Cinderace's bulk. Um, but now it does make it a bit bulkier because first off, I don't have to really like invest the speed as much. And I know like uh, auto drafted Cinderace and SCDA, uh, Silphco Draft League. And yeah, he like, he had some pretty bulky Cinderace's as well. So I also feel like defensively, it had some good stuff. and. U-Turn was something that I thought was really, really underestimated when it came to Series 10 draft. And as you know, we'll talk about later, it really did help. And this mod just had so many tools. Overall, like, I was just really happy with how this mod performed. 79, pretty solid. Was my MVP this season. I don't think anything else got more kills. So, yeah. Um, was really good. I think this is one of the mods that, like, just really, really worked out well. And it was a bit of a, I guess, risk because everyone, no one thought that Cinderace would really be that good, right? Everyone was skeptical. Um, I think Womble was pretty close to putting Cinderace in tier two, right? Like, so I'm really happy with how I did with it. It was really, really fun to use, especially in an S10 format because, yeah, I, I knew it would be different. But, you know, it just, man, it was so good. Um, and there were so many sets I could, I could run. I ran a bunch of sets. The one thing, I really think, like, you can't run special anymore with Cinderace, and I think that's one thing to where, like, in draft, I know, um, Kel, who had this, who had Cinderace before me, ran, like, Whimsicott Cinderace and Fate Tears and stuff, and, yeah, I don't think you can really run, uh, special Cinderace in Series 10. It's, it's not really the place for it. So, some of its versatility, I don't think is as strong, but I definitely think it's defensive utility, um, you know, coaching, support, 
it's it's got a lot more now in S10, and you can you can really really bulk it up. So that's my thoughts on Cinderace. I I'm so happy it's still in tier one now. Um, it's incredible, incredible mod in my opinion, and really really underestimated. So I'm happy I was able to to use it well. You know. Um, so secondly, we have Clefable. As you can see, Clefable is right here and also right there in my season four team. I just kind of want to say that Clefable did an S10 format. Um, I knew it was just going to be a follow me bot. As the season progressed, I tried to use some different things. Um, and as you'll see, kind of like my first time fighting Calypsia, for example, my second time fighting Calypsia, like I still had follow me on it. But the sets were, were crazy different. In, in just a lot of how they were used. And so, I definitely kind of upgraded how I used Clefable, and I, you know, I tried to use it in a way that wasn't as, um, I guess, wasn't as predictable, right? Because, like, for example, against Batista, I ran Safeguard on Clefable, and I just had um, Vicat, for example. I ran Iron Ball Clefable with After You, right? So I had a lot of, like, cooler things, and so as the season progressed, as I started to do really well, and, you know, I got to that 5 for example. Um, I really enjoyed using kind of different, um, different styles of Fable than just Follow Me Bot. It had Follow Me, I think, every single time, though. But, yeah, 12, 11, kill diff. <laughs> um, I don't know how this mod is my second, um, second most in kills, but, yeah, it is. So, yeah, I mean, come on, it was fun to use. And, I, I mean, it was... It was such a crucial part to this team. Because so many of this team's mods is like ability to set up, right? You have Blasters, you have Cinderace, you have um, Thunderous. So it was just it was really crucial to this team and honestly it was definitely tier one. Like it was just it was really, really good. So yeah, not much to say. I think this is gonna be one of those mods that's gonna be the same almost every single week. Um but its defensive capabilities are insane. Like, I don't think it ever got one shot, you know? Like, it's it's so, so good. And in in Season 4, for example, there were definitely times it got one shot, you know? So, yeah. Super fun set. Love, love playing with Clefable. Not happening next season, though, I can tell you that much. Two seasons, two seasons is where we're going to let it rest, so. Um, next, I'm going to go to my first pick of Tier 2. That was Thunderous Theory. So, back, like, a year ago, me and Goomer and Varun and my guy um, did, a, did a team building, had a team building server, and one of the mods I wanted to use really badly was Thunderous Theory. And as we were building, we talked about the problem that Thunderous Theory doesn't have a flying type move. So, in Dynamax, when it... You know, it has such a strong special attack that you'd think that it could be really good, but that lack of max airstream, especially at the speeds at 101, where max airstream is going to make it outspeed almost anything, in a max format, it's just a lot worse. And so, I came into this draft saying, hey, I want to draft Thunderous Therian, because I know now in this format, it's going to be a lot better, a lot easier to use. And you're not going to feel restricted by the lack of a flying type move. Now, I I think the problem with this mod was actually that I didn't have a flying type move. So, Cinderace, which was like my other mod that had like a, a flying type move, had bounce. And there was not really a bunch of times I wanted to use bounce. Acrobatics also isn't like a, a super viable option, right? Like I'm not using acrobatic Cinderace a bunch, right? That's just, that's not really happening, you know? So, um, it's just, the lack of consistent flying type moves hurt me in some matchups. Um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think of, of what matchups specifically, but I do remember times, especially, I mean, you know, one, one example would be Calopsia, right? Um, where he had Urshifu and he had Thwacky. I knew those were going to come the second time, and I didn't have as good of a way to deal with it because I didn't have a consistent flying type move. If Thunderous had a flying type move, then easy, right? It outspeeds both. I can just go for an air slash. It's probably going to KO um, Urshifu, and 
depending on the set, it'll probably kick it back, but it doesn't have air slash. So, you know, I found times where it was, it really was hard not having a flying time move. Um, and I think that's, that's probably one of the main problems was, yes, I had a flying time mom, but I didn't have flying stab, didn't have a good flying time move, and it, it hurt me in some matches for sure. So, um, that is like my one complaint, but on the bright side, I did really enjoy using this mod. It was a mod I was, I was really excited to use. And, you know, I had discharge strats, um, disquake strats with the crocodile that we used against uh, Rabbit. I think, you know, I think it just has a lot of versatility. I used e webs before, which is so, so underrated. Like, um, I don't really know of people who really prepped for e webs on the race, right? And it was super good against Calopsia, super good against uh, the Incineroars, so... Yeah, I mean, I really enjoyed using Thunderous, and um, I guess I wanted to use a uh, physical set with Coaching Thunderous, but I never got around to, around to it. I used some of the support. I used Special, of course, but never got to use a physical because it has 145 base special attack and also 105 base attack, right? So its stats are really, really good, and it's just incredible mod in general. I would definitely suggest this mod as a tier 2. I had a bunch of fun using it, um, and yeah, it, it's, you know, every single draft I try to draft one of that really doesn't get to see a lot of usage, and I don't think, I think that if I didn't draft this mod, probably wouldn't have gotten drafted, so I was, I was happy that I got to use it, so. Next, my next tier two, I believe was, was Blastoise, yeah, I, I think it was Blastoise, so. Blastoise is actually pretty underwhelming. Um, you know, I was looking for a fake out mod, and <sighs> fake out was was a weakness of this team because, you know, I didn't have a fast fake out user. I had a nice bulky one, but it, it felt awkward to bring in some matches. Um, even though it was bulky, it just really didn't do much. Even though it was right, it's like, oh, Blastoise is on the field. So what, you know, um, what does it really do? Okay, it's going to come in, it's going to fake out. Cool, like, cool, you know? Um, I don't think it's a bad mod. I think it definitely deserves tier 2. My problem is just that it didn't really fail on the scene comp, you know? Um, there's a couple other mods I kind of wish I'd, I'd gotten. There's a bunch of fake out stuff. Um, I know Weavile was, you know, available kind of late. Um, I think something like Weavile would have been a bit better. Um, even though I didn't have the Fire Water Grass Queen in that case. Which be because I had Bastion, never mind. So, yeah, I, uh, it was pretty underwhelming. Um, probably, yeah, probably one of the most underwhelming pieces on this team. Especially for Tier 2. Like, I used Scarf Water Strap VMs, it was super good, but then, yeah, it didn't do much. You know, a 3-4... Yeah, not much I can say. I guess, like, I wanted to use other sets. I wanted to use physical shell smash. I thought that coaching would be good on it, but... Yeah, it just did... It really, really didn't cut it. And... Yeah. I'm gonna have to think about it more. I just... Yeah, it, it really wasn't my favorite, so... Yeah, next is Crocodile. So... Crocodile's, like... Good. But it also, like, kind of isn't, you know? Um... I don't really feel like there were a lot of matches that Crocodile just won for me. Um, and there were definitely some matches that kind of just lost for me, really. I felt like, you know, I wanted an Intimidate Mon because I wanted a pretty bulky team. Um, you know, as you can see, I had Porygon, I had Fable, I had Blastoise. I wanted the the two super strong attackers in Thunder Race, Instant Race. Then I wanted some more bulk. And so I wanted to be able to have Crocodile and to... Um, have blasters with those offensive options, but I also wanted a super bulky team. I, I yeah, I, I did really like using it. Scarf was super fun to use. I kind of wanted to use Band, but I never got around to it. And honestly, just as an off offensive mod, it really is good, right? You can get in there, you can intimidate, and you can always, you can almost always KO one or two mods. Like it's, 
it's, it's pretty solid. solid. Um, I don't really know if I drafted it again. It definitely was a little bit more underwhelming than I thought it'd be. Um, but overall, yeah, I, I enjoyed this mod. Not much to say. Uh, I do think that would have been better with Tailwind. And that's something I, I do kind of want to talk about this team. One of the biggest problems with this team was that I didn't have a Tailwind mode. Because I had mods like Cinderace, Thunderace, and Crocodile that were mid-speed. Or, you know, high mid-speed, right? And they didn't really have a way to to do much with, like, they had no speed control options, you know? And so there were some matches that I really did struggle in building because they had tailwind options, and I couldn't beat them with those options, you know? So, ultimately, yeah. Uh, I, I love Crooked Out. I kind of wish I'd gotten something else, like Northern, for example, that I would have been able to have a solid tailwind mode, and it, it really would have helped Crooked Out. And so... No, Thunderous and Crocodile both really struggled from not having that. Cinderace didn't really need it, but those two struggled from not having it. So, yeah, um, I, I think that's kind of the main problem, is, like, I know that those mods could have done better if they had a Tailwind option, but I tried to get one later in the season, and I wasn't able to. So, um, yeah. Next, we have Delmice. Uh, I think, yeah, we have Delmize and Guzzlord, I think, next. So, Delmize was really, really good. I actually didn't bring it a lot, but the two matches that I remember bringing to it, bringing it, it did really, really well. Um, against Galopsy, it wasn't as strong as I thought it'd be, but against Ems and against Gert, it was really, really, really solid. Um, and even against Gert, you know, I talked with Gert afterward, and he said that he didn't have much to actually beat my Delmize mode, and yeah, I honestly kind of wish I'd rely on this mod a bit more, like it, it is really, really, really strong in a non-max format, and you know, the it has way more potential than I was able to kind of show it, so yeah, I mean, it, it really is a good mod, having three stabs, being able to stop opponents from switching is really strong. And you can do some really cool things, like, in a terrain team, for example, where you have Steel Roller or something like that. Like, overall, I, I, uh, I really do feel like I could have done more with this mod. It is pretty bulky as well, and I never brought it outside of Trick Room, which I kind of thought was a bit of a mistake. Um, but yeah, uh, really fun mod, enjoyed using it. And I think that's going to bring us to our next mod, which is Gelslord. So... I think one of the problems with this team was also a little bit how much I focused on on my Trick Room mode in later um, in, in later rounds. Like, I didn't need Guzzlord, you know? It came once. One game. It got 3-0. It showed up to the match versus Auto and then never came. So... It's great. Like, it really is good. But I don't have much to say because I didn't really get to use it to the extent that I wanted to. Um, having a physical and special option, being able to go super bulky with it, um, I think it does have iron defense. Um, I could be wrong, but I know it has some, some type of defensive setup, I think. Um, I do think it's pretty good. I just didn't get to use it because I had so many better trick room options that it just really wasn't worth it. And, and kind of another problem I had was I had trouble attacking other dragon types. And this was kind of evident to me against the Incineroars and against Otto, where they both had strong dragon types as their, like, as a tier one. And not having a dragon type option because... Guzzlord didn't ever come and was too slow wasn't that great you know like I, I really wish I, I had a different dragon that was able to hit those mods um and because my fairy was supportive I really did need some type of offensive dragon and not having that kind of hurt this team um is coverage is really good because you have dragon 
you get poison. Um, poison on both sides, for example, physical and special. So you can run poison against, like, for example, Primarina, you could run a physical set. Um, but against another Mon, you could run a special set, right? So it's, it is really, really good. Um, and it's a lot bulkier than people realize. Like, Assault Vest Guzzlord could live a Life Warp Hatterini Dazzling Gleam. And also a Togekiss Dazzling Gleam, right? I wanted to bring a Cell Vest so many times because it's so strong. But, yeah, I mean, it, it really is able to live a lot because of its HP. But it just didn't fail on this team, honestly. Um, so, yeah. Next is... Let's go to Aggron next. Aggron had a really, really good season. I thought it was strong. I thought it was really, really strong. I didn't get to use it as much because of the steam comp, and you know, as you can see, I think my top is strong, and that was pretty evident, but I had some problems with my bottom and my trick remote. Um, Aggron has so much it can do. It can be, I wanted to bring it Totemize a bunch of times, I wanted to bring it against Galopsia both times, I wanted to bring it against Goomer. Really, really fun. Sturdy is super good in this format, especially with its weaknesses. But it also has a lot of resist, so you can run something like Assault Vest and just be really, really bulky as well. So, honestly, great mod. Enjoyed it a bunch, but... Yeah, I mean, KD84 against Vikag, I think it went 5-0. So, super strong. Would definitely draft again. Kind of would like it in a different team comp, but I felt like he was really, really good in the S10 meta and, and the S10 format, so... Um... Yeah, I think it's also got, what, Rock Head, Head Smash, which means it doesn't take damage from that. So you can run something cool like Rock Head, Focus Sash, Head Smash, and, or like Wide Lens, I guess. So, yeah, super fun, enjoyed it a bunch. Um, and it definitely was one of my stronger Trick Room pieces, and it was brought the most, I think, out of all my Trick Room mods. So, was really fun, was really cool to use, and... I definitely think I drafted it again. It was it was really, really solid. Next is Kursla. You know, Kursla's one of that mods. I think I brought Kursla to matches more than I brought Agron. But to individual games, I brought Agron way more. Um, I don't know why that is, but there was so many cool stuff I could do with Kursla. I never got to show Meteor Beam. Um, against Kalopsia, it was super clutch in game two with Substitute. Um, the problem is really its bulk, because in Trick Room, a big advantage is you want something that can hit hard, but also take a lot of hits, because you don't have to spend 252 investment in speed. Problem with Kursla is both its HP and its defense stats are bad, so you can only choose one or the other. It's, okay, maybe I can live more special moves. Or I can try and live more defensive moves, but I have zero HP. So, you're stuck in this kind of rut where it's like, okay, do I go HP defense? Do I go HP special attack? Do I go special attack defense? And, yeah, it's it's kind of hard when it comes to EVing. I did like the Meteor Beam set because I could go HP defense and go Meteor Beam. And at plus one, it's still going to be doing a ton. I don't have to rely a bunch on investment, right? So I can go Mirror Beam, Shadow Ball, Earth Power, whatever. And I can also have a bunch of defense. But it was just like, I can never run a Will-O-Wisp set because who cares? It's not living any super effective hit even with a Will-O-Wisp. Like, Urshifu was still doing like 175, you know, 200 damage after a Will-O-Wisp. You know, it was not that much, but it was, it was crazy. Like, it was a lot. It would 100% still Oko, okay, even after a little bit. So, that's the problem with Kursla, but offensively, it's insane. It's so good. Um, Shadow Ball is a solid move. I do wish it got a bit of a stronger Ghost Eye move, but it's still super strong. 145 Special Attack, Intergroom, 30 Base Speed. Incredible. Incredible. Would I would love to draft again. I don't know if I will, but... Um, would love to draft again. It really is a super strong mod. And I didn't get get to really show all the sets I wanted to. Because there is there is a lot of stuff you could do. You could even run like an Iron Defense Amnesia. Like 
yeah, Cursa. So it, it had a lot of good stuff, but yeah, I don't really think a, an offensive set could actually work, or a defensive set could work, but yeah, it, it has some options. So now I think we're on to our tier five. So let's talk about the best tier five you can get right now. That's Porygon. So, I need a Trick Room Setter. And I kind of wish I got in there earlier, but, you know, pass to pass. And I was like, you know what, Porygon, let's get it. Evil Light, pretty bulky. I mean, probably just going to survive a bunch of stuff, right? I also thought Download was super good because, you know, and, and Otto pointed out in, in the draft chat, right, where he was like, okay, the reason why... TR setters that are like NFE, right? The reason they're so much worse is because they they don't do anything once they're on the field, right? So my my bronze or goes on the field, and it's like cool now bronze or with uh you know that that I don't know what whatever base attack that is uh you know with cyber ball like just gonna do little little ship just keep going doesn't really do anything it's a trick room, and then you can just aim the mod that isn't Bronze Orb, and you win, you know? But Porygon has the advantage of download. So, when you download, you can say, okay, now I'm actually a threat, right? I can go and I can try attack mods, and it's a threat. And one thing, so, I was listening to someone's um, draft, like a draft review thing the other day, they're talking about how in a lot of these type of mods, when they're just sitting on the field, you want something that's going to be able to tell your opponent, hey, like, notice me, right? So, you know, it's why I think Fissure is, like, a, a, a viable option. Because when you have something like Galarian Stunfish, for example, that's just sitting there and not doing anything, um, and it's just, like, Fissures, it doesn't matter whether it hits or miss, like, a Fissure could just lose you the game, right? And so you have to start paying attention to that mom because of what it's doing. So that's why I ran out uh, of switch on Porygon. Um, that's why download is so good, is because it, it's not just a mom that sits on the field anymore, it's actually doing something, and you have to watch out for it, because if you don't, it's going to do some damage, right? Um, it's not just a mom that you can really just leave on the field, and I think that was pretty evident when I played Calypso the first time, where it did actually really help me win, um, win games. So... Porygon is probably the best tier 5 right now. And, I mean, other than, like, Lycanroc, Lycanroc Midnight that I think should really be in 4, but, like, yeah. I think it's a, a tier 5 right now. Like, the best tier 5. It's it's really, really good. And if you need a Trick Room Sitter and you just need something cheap, you just get Porygon. It's, it's really good. Really, really good. And, and we'll talk about it some more when I get into the, to my schedules. So... Lastly, we have Basculin. Um, Basculin did nothing. It came against Kumar, it was Scarf, and it didn't get any kills. Basculin uh, needs Evil Light. It's not that good. So, so now, on to uh, my matches. So, yeah. And all honesty, Basculin, um, yeah, it was just filling my Didn't really do that much. So, I want to talk specifically about um, my match versus Z. Blazekins, my match versus the Darmantins, um, and my match versus the Ice Q first. So, specifically against Blazekins, um, this was a pretty interesting match because, so every single week, Otto was doing his whole match stuff, and he ended up voting for Ems because it was a pretty even match. But the problem was that Ems had a really solid Tailwind option, and you know, at the very first week of the season, I saw a massive flaw. It's like, okay, Cinderace and Blastoise could just slap him if I had a Tailwind. Like, they could do so, so much. If I had a way to beat Talonflame, if I had a way to beat Talonflame in, in a Tailwind, right? So, what ended up happening was, I had this idea for Scarf Blastoise. Because I thought that Ems was almost always going to protect Talonflame with when Boss was on the field, right? But I also felt that it had a lot of offensive pressure against his mod. So, 
At least, at least, yeah, they're not. So, I was like, okay, I can bring Scarf Water Spout Blastoise. So what happens is I actually started leaving it with Porygon. And um, it was a bit awkward at first, but, you know, I went for some Ice Beams. I also had Fake Out on there for Talonflame um, in case of the mind games. But I also realized that I could just bring it once Shurikum was over. So I my first game, I ran Porygon, Blastoise, Delmise, Kursla. And, you know, I, I switched out Blastoise up to turn one. And I kind of tried to do as much as I could in Trick Room. And then about turn three happens of Trick Room. I'm like, okay, Blastoise can win this, right? Mons are super low on, on their side. Um, and I can just win this, right? I can just uh, win this with Blastoise. So I just need to do a little bit of chip to uh, Rotom Wash. I can get it to my to a position where a Scarfire Spatch is going to kill everything because there, there, was, there was Darn, but there was no Town Flight. Right? This was... You know, this this was the first match where I... I kind of started to get... Like, my, my team wasn't really great in this first match. Um, I didn't really have a good flow of my team until week three. And so, I still was getting used to it. But I did see how strong a good Scarf mod on this team was. Because I could have a strong Trick Room mode. I could put a scarf on, um, and I could really do a lot of damage because my team had a bunch of damage output. So having a scarf was always going to be so powerful against someone's team. This is why you know there's jokes in the Discord server about you know I'm scarf man, um, in in GLDL. Um, <laughs> Otto is talking about you know my semifinals match, and he's like, yeah. This guy can couldn't beat Gumi because he's Scarf Man. He can't beat Gumi with Scarf, right? So, yeah. I mean, I'm no, I'm the Scarf guy, right? But I also think it just really fit well on this team. I'm like it, it was a viable option to bring Scarf every single week because it did well on this team without any speed control, and that was when I started to kind of get a flow for for kind of how my team functioned. So now, week three. What happened with Fever vs. Darmian Tains was, um, this was like, this was the premier match, right? I was really nervous about this match. Colopsia had won one VDL and gotten second in the, in the previous season, season four. So, I knew I had a lot, I knew he had a lot going for him. Um, he had a solid matchup, he had Urshifu, he had Lele. Um, and Urshifu kind of wrecked a lot of my team. A bunch of my mons were weak to fighting in dark in that combo. So it was, it was a bit of a scary matchup. De Yo, it was. I think it was kind of even. Like some people said it was me. Some people said it was Calypsia. In building, I think maybe it was favor towards me, and I think Calypsia agreed with that. Even while on paper you might say, "Oh, Urshifu," in building it's like, "How do I get rid of this Clefable?" Um, how about Thunderous? How about his Trick Room mode? So, on, on building, like, in theory, or I guess in practice. In theory, it was for Calypsia. In practice, I think it was for me. So, this is when, this is when Scarf Cinderace came out. Um, I was talking with my guy, and we were like, okay, you know, probably just go Scar Scarf Crocodile, right? We can, uh, go Darkest Slayer, we can High Horse Power stuff. And then I was like, hmm, maybe I should go Scarf Cinderace. But, I don't know, maybe maybe I shouldn't. And then my guy goes, you know, what if we go Scarf Cinderace? And I was like, hmm, you know what, Let, let's go Scarf Cinderace. Um, so the idea was, a lot of his mons were weak to this bug combo, because it, he was a Psychic Training team. So, I could U-turn, and I could get out into something that could take Psychic hits, like Crocodile, for example. Um, or I could pivot into Trick Room. So, yeah, so I had that use option, but I think the other thing that was actually really, really important was the fact that I outspit all his other Scarf mods. So, he had to go into this matchup saying, oh, you know, a Scarf Starmie looks really good. I can Oko Cinderace, I can outspeed Scarf Crocodile, which I'm worried about. But having Scarf Cinderace was to say, okay, 
I cannot speed whatever Scarf mods he brings. Because he has some options. He can bring Nidoking King with, like, a special Nidoking King, Sheer Force, Earth Power, Ice Beam. He can bring a special Starmie. He can bring, um, Scarf Ra Raikou. He had a lot of options. He can bring Scarf Urshifu. Um, so I said, okay, how do I consistently beat whatever Scarf mod he's going to bring? Because I was pretty confident he was going to bring one. So I said, we said, how about, um, Scarf Cinderace? Um, and... Yeah, so I I really was happy about my prep. Like I felt like I, I did a really solid job in prepping against Calypso. Um, and then I also had the Curseless set, which it was a substitute Curseless, and it was to, just in case Urshifu was Sucker Punch, right? Like, let's just say, you know, Psych Terrain isn't up, I can just substitute, right? And if he goes for a Dark, if he goes for a Wicked Blow, then okay, I know in Trick Room he goes for a Wicked Blow when there's no Psychic Terrain. Up. He probably doesn't have Sucker Punch. But in small chance, he has Sucker Punch. In the small chance, he has Sucker Punch, and he has Psych Terrain up, and he switches into Grass Terrain, or Psych Terrain finishes. I want to wait to beat it in Trick Room. Game 2 happens, and I'm down 0 1. And he, uh. He didn't bring Psych Terrain. And so, he was free to Sucker Punch. I knew he had Sucker Punch. Um. And having Substitute w was the play that won me the game, game two. Like, I think had I not Substituted, had he, yeah, like, had I not Substituted and had he still Sucker Punched, and had I, like, I don't know, Earth Power and whatever, I probably would have lost the game. Um, he had the momentum. I didn't really have a way to beat him after that. I was too passive. But having that Substitute, being able to get some damage off with Kursla, won me the game. So, I I was really happy about my prep, and then game three, game three I got a little bit unlucky, because, yeah, I got a little bit unlucky, he had Flare Yum, Flare Blitz, um, he burned my Clefable, without the burn, I would have survived, um, and then without the Clefable, um, he had a, he had a pretty easy way to win, he then choked, and I took the game 2-1. So, I was really confident about the season, Yo, going to match, like, going into the season, I said, hey, I think I have a chance to win, right? Like, I think I can play head-to-head -head with these guys. And this was a match that kind of showed to me, yeah, you can. Like, you can go toe-to-toe go -to -to with these guys. You can beat the champions. Um, and so I was really happy about this match. I really was. I, I, I felt like... This match showed to me that I was able to to really compete and that I wasn't getting the playoffs as a fluke, you know, that I was able to to really beat the best players. So what's that about this match? There was the choke, um, but there's a there's a part two to this story, so we'll we'll get after that. So next we have the old English ice cubes. Um I was five oh at this point. I've gone two oh two oh two one two oh two oh two oh. Um so I faced against the English old English ice cubes. I was supposed to face off against the Hidden Link Grim Styles, and I thought it was gonna be an easy win. I was able to just intimidate a bunch of these guys' mons, um, and win. But no, Gert came in and he was like, you know what? Gimme, I'm gonna drive past him. And you know what, Gimme? I'm just gonna make your life horrible. And so this was probably the worst match of my entire season. This is this is a pretty pretty bad match. Um, I remember bringing. I, I remember this was the one game I didn't bring scarf. And it was the first game I lost. Lost. Coincidence? Probably not. Um, but yeah. So scarf didn't look good, and speed control was a bit of an issue. I uh. I had a way to win, and you know I was talking with Gert, and as I said so. Game one, he beats me. There was a little bit of hacks that was unfortunate. Um, you know, it is hard to, to kind of blame games on on hacks. You know, like I've I've tried to not. It's kind of hard sometimes, right? Yeah, a pair was kind of bad on my Blastoise that had shell smashed, and that could have, um, that could have done a lot of damage. At the same time, I didn't play super well anymore. Game two comes in, I go with Dumbass, and 
I, I win pretty easily. Um, I played pretty well. Game two, won easily. Game three, I played really well up until the last five turns. And, you know, I was in a, I was in a 4v2 position. And Gur was able to claw back. This was kind of the game where I, you know, had I won this game, I would have easily had a first seed. And, you know, this was, this was a check game, right? This was the game that said, hey, I know you're 5-0. I know you beat a champion, but you still got a lot to learn, right? And my prep... My prep had to be a little bit different for a harder matchup, you know. Um, when when you play in harder matchups, you need to, the mentality of, okay, how do I not lose this, right? Or, uh, you know, what is it I can do to really catch him off guard? And I, and I played a bit too safe when it came to my prep. And as you'll see later, I think that that kind of did hurt me. Um, and I think it's, it's probably one of those things that I, I need to fix when it comes to my play and when it comes to my prep. So... Next, I'll go over uh, Batista's game, and then we'll go over my two playoff games. So, against Batista, he's a mono poison. I only need one game to take the first seed. Um, I game one, I took. It, it wasn't the cleanest game, but I took it. Game two, I played pretty. I played decently, and then at the very end, I kind of played. Poorly, I made, I made a mistake that lost me the game. So that mistake was, I high horse powered an air balloon skuntic. So, had I not, I was in a much much better position, because I lost this game by one turn. By one turn, I, I mean like, had I had one more turn, I would have won the game, right? Or had I finished the game, if the game had finished one turn earlier, I would have won the game, right? Um, so I needed one move that made killing his mods faster. And that move was not wasting a high horsepower onto an air balloon scud tank. Um, I was pretty happy about my prep. It was kind of hard because it's like, against them on a poison team, you just want to run super effective ground and poison type moves, call it a day, run that scarf crocodile. Um, but I think it was also a learning experience to say, hey, regardless of the matchup, you need to really think about the match, right? Even if it's a mono poison team. Um, you know, you can't underestimate people just because of their team. And in Chill DL, I lost to, to a non-playoff contestant because I thought his team was trash, and then he just outplayed me because my team prep was also lazy. No. So, same thing happened here. My, my team prep could have been better. It was... It was hard to build against the mono poison team, but I could have, you know, I could have just not, I could have not just slapped on super effective moves and called it a day, you know? So, you know, I still have a lot to learn when it comes to my, my team prep and especially my play because, because Batista played super, super well in this game. Um, he definitely was, was gunning for that first seed. He needed a, a 2-0. I got the 1-2 and I got the first seed at... Five and one, at five and two, five and two plus. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I, I got it at five and two. So I had a guaranteed first seed here. Went against Bolton Bashers and memed. So next match was a rematch versus Darmanitans because they got a bye week one. And I went up against Darmanitans. And so I, I really wanted the rematch here. Um, you know, after Calypso's choke, it, it's one of those things where, you know, I, I was talking to Lucian, right, and after he beat Goomer, he had this thing to where he's like, you know, man, I feel like, I feel like people thought it was a fluke, I, I beat Goomer, right? Um, and I kind of felt the same way about Calypso, right? I was like, I feel like maybe people thought it was a fluke, I beat Calypso, that like, I shouldn't have, have, have beaten him, he's a better player, you know, he should have beaten me all day, he just happened to choke, like, Goomer got lucky, um... And so I wanted a way to say, hey, you know, it was it was the second proving to me to say, you know, I can, I really can get to top four. And so I never got to top four um, in one of the Wi-Fi seasons yet. 
this is my my third season in a Wi-Fi, and I, I hadn't gotten top four, so I wanted to make the statement of. I'm a win, and I'm I'm gonna finally make top four of this team. So. My prep mainly came down to Khalil. I knew at, based on what he brought that I thought he was gonna bring Thrahi again. I knew he was gonna bring Urshifu again. And I said, okay. I want to bring Grassy C Clefable. I wanna I wanna quick give a shout out to my dad real fast. So basically my like when it comes you know, most people when they play Pokemon, their parents don't really care, right? You know, a teenager playing video games, who cares? My dad wants me to win, you know, like he's he's one of those guys who's like, okay, I don't care that you're playing Pokemon, but if you're gonna play Pokemon you better win, you know? Um and so he's 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 analyzed my games before. He's uh, he's talked to me about my games, and one time I think one of one of these matches I think I lost, and he was like, you know, why was the other why was the opponent healing his mods and you weren't? Like why were they reviving HP and you decided not to? And I was like, I don't know. I just I don't like I I don't play that way. And he's like, well then, then you're losing because you're not playing the right way, right? So I came to this match and I said, Clefable needs to live. Clefable needs to survive. If I can plan a way where I say, hey, I'm I'm using this grass CC Clefable, I'm going to bring Moonlight Clefable. Because Clefable surviving is essential to winning this matchup. And so if I want to win this matchup, I need a way to be able to revive Clefable's health. And so this was kind of... This was one of the moments throughout my season when, when I was team building, it was super, super thought out what I wanted to do, right? I knew that I wanted Clefable. I knew that Clefable was the key to my victory. And so I knew that my prep had to be centered around keeping Clefable alive. I also had fast Clefable, which, yeah, it was it's cool. It was a cool, like, fast, bulky set. So the idea was I could bring Thunderous Theory and Clefable. I could Electrowebs. And then once Urshifu was at minus one after an Electrowebs, my Clefable outsped. So I can Moonblast Urshifu. And so this problem was just now gone. Game one, he leaves Urshifu Lele, I think. And I Uwebs, I Moonblast his Urshifu. And I was in a great position for the rest of the game, right? Um, and I think he even brought the Grassy Surge and my Grassy Seed proct, and so Clefable just survived. Game 2, I don't really remember too much what happened. I remember I tried to go for Trick Room, and I remember it didn't work. Game 3 was... You know, Game 3 was the stall match, where I don't think we even finished the game. Like, it was pretty stally. He had Corsola, Galar, and I had... Um, and I had Clefable, and we just spent a lot of time, you know, reviving each other's health. Um, I think the one decision that I was really happy about was deciding to Sledge Bomb Corsola, Corsola, because I knew I had a 30% chance, and, you know, another thing that I was talking to my dad with was about making the probabilities in your favor, right? If you know, hey, I can really get rid of Corsola if I can just poison it. So I'm going to sludge bomb it, right? And even if one time it's a 30% chance, I'm just going to keep doing it because after three times, it's a lot better chance, right? Um, after five times, after ten times, it's almost guaranteed, right? Um, so I knew that I wanted to sludge bomb course. And so I made just a lot of good decisions in this match. And I was, I was really, really happy about how I played this match. It was still a close match. Um... And, you know, it's it's out of respect that I say the only reason I wanted to win this match was because of how solid of a player Colopsia was, right? Like, Colopsia is, is a top-tier player in VDL. Right now, he's one of the two representatives able to be our All-Star champion. He, I mean, he's an incredible player. So, you know, I, I did go out because I knew, hey, this guy's good, you know. Weak... I don't know, week 9, week 10 versus Otto, playoffs week, playoffs week 2, quarterfinals against Otto. 
you know, this, this, this one hurt, you know, <laughs> this one, this was the second time out of a two owed me in playoffs to take me out of VDL. This, this one hurt a little. Um, I think there were parts of my prep that were just kind of bad. Like, my Scarf Blastoise didn't need to be brought, didn't need to be brought, didn't, I, like, yeah, it just, it really wasn't what I was looking for. Um, I played poorly game two where I had an easy, easy play and lost. This, you know, again, this is, this was a checker match. This is the match that said, hey, look, you, you beat one person, but you have a long way to go, right? And as much as the season showed me how good of a player I can be, how good I can prep, how good I can, how far I can make it, it also showed me how much I really did need to learn. Because against the best of the best of the best, against Otto, the two-time VDL champion, champion, I still couldn't even take a game off him. Um, so, yeah, that was... That was that was the end of my season. That was my that was my top four uh, ending. So to recap, you know I'm I'm super happy with the season. I felt like I felt like this this was the season that I wanted. You know I wanted to have a good season, and I really like this team. I really do. So yeah, I I guess this is weird. I'm I'm not super used to doing these types of stuff, um, but I hope you guys liked it and. Yeah, let me know if you have any feedback. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'm I'm really excited to have video season six now. And yeah, I guess I guess in closure, I guess my closing thoughts. Um would just be like, yeah, thanks. Thanks to everyone who does the these drafts because this draft was really exceptional, right? It was a fun draft, it was packed. There were so many good players, and you even see like me versus Batista where it's like you can't count anybody out. You can't even count a mono team out because of how solid the mono team play is. It's so how good they are. And so, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, and I'm, I'm really excited for the next season. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'm aiming for the finals. I'm aiming to just get better and better each season. And I'll see you guys next time.